Good morning, class. I had a few questions and a few feedback about the week one, chapter one book problems. So I thought I'd make a quick video to show you, uh, kind of walk you through and hold your hand a little bit. First, I had some questions about where do I find the lecture, lecture slides and the narrated lecture. So in this week one, take a look down at the bottom here. Here are the slides. These are the slides that I will narrate and these are additional resources. This is going to be more thorough, but probably overkill, and this is going to be probably just what you need. So you can follow along the lecture slides in this one right here. So I'll try to put the lecture right before the assignment. And it's taking a while to open up, but you can view this. You can, I'm going to pause for a second while this loads. All right, so here we are, and you can view this, the lecture right here, and I do recommend you use the Modules tab to navigate. Um, the only problem is that you can't take full advantage of the, the, the lecture. If you want to skip around the lecture, click on this arrow right here, and that will take you to watch it in Panopto, and then you can actually switch, skip around the lecture. But let me go back. I'm going to pause. All right, sorry, my internet speed is very slow here in Germany, so I'm going to be trying to pause and resume as possible. Okay, so that was the lecture. Then after you've read the lecture, go into here to the book problems. And I would suggest you use these links here that I've provided. I'm going to click on the first problem. I've already logged into my test user account. And so if you haven't logged in yet, you'll have to log in. Okay, so the first question is about binary. So remember that the rightmost digit, you start there. That's a, uh, the first character is worth 1. The first, second character is worth 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. A good programmer will know those numbers by heart up to about 2 to the 16th. All right, so I know that here it's going to be 0 1s plus 0 2s, and here's a 4. So that one is going to be worth 4. Oh, hold on a second. I got to log in. Okay, so here I've got... An enter an answer put in here. I'm going to go ahead and hit on submit, and it'll show me that I've got one answer correct. I've got to do the other three still, so that's fine. Now let's go to show you the next problem. I click on this. So here you're going to check on all the ones that you think are valid identifiers. If I click the wrong one, let's go ahead and submit you'll see that it fails. Unfortunately, it will not tell you one by one which is the one that failed. But if you look at these, it wants you to consider several things. One is that identifiers must start with either letters or a very small select number of other special characters, that um, certain reserved characters, such as um, mathematical signs, cannot be used, and also certain reserved um, statements cannot be used. Or be careful about what a reserved statement is, because not all things that you might think, might think are reserved are actually reserved. Okay, so let's close this. Um, and and don't, uh, don't be surprised if number six takes you, takes you quite a few tries. Okay, let's try number seven. So here, you need to know system out println by heart. You need to understand that. You need to understand all of the class and method headers by heart. So this is just a simple test to make sure you know that. Okay, so here you're going to write just a piece of bare code, and I'm going to copy and paste this here to start, and then I'm going to put in my system out. Got print lin, and if you want to be fast about this, copy this, and then apply it to each line, and then you're going to go down to the end here, and you know that everything needs to be closed by a quote. Um, and of course, the clever of you will know that there's already some errors here. If I just run this as is, you're going to get lots of errors. And so unclosed string literal. Well, that's because if you read the uh, lectures, you know that, uh, that every quote here needs to be preceded by a backslash. And every backslash needs to be preceded by a backslash. So let's just try changing that one line and see what happens. Okay, so it accepted the first line, but we've still got other errors that you're going to have to correct. 
All right, so let's close this and let's go back to the next one, 19. So here, you need to make sure that you understand how to define a class and how to define the main by heart. So pay attention to spellings, capitalizations, are all the, the right characters in here, and um, make sure everything is closed with a semicolon, that all quotes are closed, that and there are any quotes or backslashes, they have a escape, uh, escaped with a, a backslash character. You're going to correct those errors. Next one. Here, this one, again, just I want to make sure that you understand how to declare a method with the correct syntax. You need to know that by heart. Let's try 22. Okay, here, I'm not going to walk through this, but just in general, you need to understand the program flow very carefully. So program flow always starts at main. That's inherited from C. And it's going to, produce, it's going to proceed down the body of main. But whenever it calls a method, like here, what's going to happen is program flow is going to jump down to message 1. Now let's suppose that inside message 1 I had called message 2. So then it would jump from here down to message 2, run that, come back, and then fin finish up message 1, and then come back to where we started up here. So you just need to understand that, and then what they wanted you to do is they want you to figure out what is the first thing here. Does Is this the first thing printed out? I'll tell you right now, it is not the first thing printed out. So you need to put the first thing that's printed out here, second, third, etc. 29. Okay, here's another one where you have to find the errors. The same list of errors in general that I've talked about before. So make sure you check each line for errors. When you get them all right, when you hit submit, you'll you'll be able to finish that up. Okay, now the exercises are a little bit harder because they're going to be actually having you write some code. So um, I've just put uh, what I did is I copy pasted this in here. I um, here let me let me start from scratch. So you can actually click on show header here, and it will give you it'll erase. It says it's going to erase what's there. So that gives you a little bit of a start. Public class egg. I'm not going to define, but you're going to need to put define main in here, and I'm not going to fill it all in for you. But you're going to need to have main in there, and then you're going to need to have a bunch of system dot out dot print lens. And what I would suggest you do is you just copy and paste this in, and you're going to need to adjust. So just like I was saying before, you put the system out print lens quotes, and then put each line in here. But make sure you use the correct escape characters. Okay. Let's go to the last exercise. Here, it's similar to the last problem, but it's much longer. Now, I don't want you to just create 15 or whatever uh, print lens. I've put in the instructions, you should create three static methods called by main. I want you to break down uh, the problem, and this is your first exercise in being able to decompose the problem. So imagine that this section here were printed three times so that it looked like this. Then what it should make you think is in your main, you're going to need to call um, egg top, or just, you know, that's a terrible name, but you're going to need to do that three times. And then down later, you're going to have a definition for the egg top. And it's going to be with system out. Sorry, my keyboards. Print lin. And you're going to need to have the three lines here. So that's just a, sim a sample of what you're going to need to do here. I want you to break the problem down. You should be able to find three different things that are repeated in this structure. Create a method for each of those three different things, just like I created here a method for one of the things. And then in your main, you're going to call those different functions. Okay? So that is week one. Good luck to you.